Hi guys, um, I'm going to post a short video for chair yoga. I know that a lot of us are work working from home right now or we have um, kind of a hard time finding space or, or uh, being able to use our yoga mat for various reasons and I want you to know that yoga can be done at any time, anywhere, just as a you know, just as long as you have a chair or a couch. So I'm just going to show you a couple of um, possibilities for how to work on your practice from home without a yoga mat. Um, I'm going to use this chair. It doesn't have any arms on it, as you can see. But if you have a chair with arms or even a bar stool or something else, that's fine too. My other little prop that I'm going to use is this thing. Uh, this is like a little seat that I put, you know, my makeup in. So if you have a coffee table, that might be nice too, or, um, you know, yoga blocks. But if you don't have anything, you don't need anything, this is, uh, we're going to put our feet on it. So find something you're comfortable putting your feet on, even if it's not a chair, right? And the other thing is, well, I guess that's it. I mean, that's all we need <laughs> for a chair yoga is just, um, Chair. Okay. So I want to go over just a couple of things for why we do chair yoga, myself included, is that if you're working uh, in an office or at home and you just feel like you don't have time for yoga or you can't do it, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Sometimes it's just trying to be creative and uh, work your practice a little bit different. So we're going to do things that's everything from uh, beginner friendly, gentle and restorative to intermediate, right? Or advanced chair yoga. Just anything that you can um, build your practice with. Now, if you have ideas, let me know. I'd love to. I'd love to learn more and do more chair yoga. But this is just the first. All right, that was long winded. Enough talking. Here we go. So you're going to sit up nice and tall on your chair, so that your feet touch the ground. You don't want to be sitting so far back that just your toes are touching the ground or that you're leaning back. So take a moment, get comfortable on your chair. You're dropping your feet all the way down. So you're, you want your heels completely flat, so much so that maybe you can lift the toes. We'll get into that in a little bit. Hands on your lap, sitting up nice and tall. Roll back your shoulders, roll forward your shoulders, roll back your shoulders, and roll forward your shoulders. What this looks like on the side is rolling back, rolling forward, rolling back, rolling forward. Now I want you to think of this as isolation, all right? So we're not doing big movements with our spine. We're not really trying to move the back right now. It's just shoulders back, shoulders forward, back, forward. Now what I'm doing is I'm rolling up. So I'm using my chest muscles and my back muscles to roll. Now if you don't like the way that feels in your rotator cuff, if you can hear or feel some type of crunching or rolling around in your body that you don't like the sound of, uh, that's your rotator cuff into your, uh, into your arm. But if you don't like the way that feels, just pull back, pull forward, pull back, pull forward. So you don't have to do this little dramatic roll, especially if it aggravates your levator muscle. And that's what allows you to shrug. So the next little step is relax, shrug up, drop down with control, shrug up, down with control. Come up, down with control. Up, down. Now this time, shrug up, even higher. Even higher. Shrug up so high that you're, you think your shoulders can even touch your ears. Now when you let go, you're just going to drop down. <sighs> All right. So what we're doing is we're flexing this levator muscle really tight really 
strong, you may even feel it in your back, and then you completely let go. All right, shoulders up. Done. Now it looks like from the side is you keep your spine straight and you shrug up so tight, so tall, so much that you just have to release and drop it. Okay? Up. <laughs> Down. Nice. <laughs> just starting our practice so if you're at home in bed or if you've been up <laughs> working for a while or if you're still getting used to your at-home routine you're going to find that the more you sit even if you're sitting and watching Netflix I don't know if you guys have seen Tiger King um, I'm sure you have that man Joe Exotic is single-handedly getting us through this quarantine crisis with entertaining us you don't have an account you should just get one just for that it's so weird <laughs> lower down um, you're gonna find that this really relaxes the shoulders whether you're shrugging or coming up and back you're gonna start with isolation on just one arm roll it back when we're sitting down watching Netflix and eating or working on a computer it's the weirdest thing somehow our shoulders just creep up I think this is because we carry a lot of tension in our back and in our chest. So doing these dramatic movements of rolling, pulling back and pulling forward, the shrugging and the dropping, we're going to switch arms. Realize, look like you recognize just how much tension you carry. So it's kind of a nice way to do that, like what, maybe three times, maybe six times, who cares, just a couple of times in, in any capacity, you'll find like, oh my gosh, I had no idea I was so tight. So let's do it two more. Up, shrug high, really high, really, really, really high. Drop. Up. Drop. Now when you drop, whew, it should feel good. So we did the shoulders forward and back, right? We did the shoulders up and down. We did one at a time. Now we're going to do cat-cow breathing. So what this looks like from the side is when you take your hands to your laps, I want your hands to be facing downward and you're gripping your legs. So you're not holding on tight, you're just giving yourself a little bit of a grip here. Without leaning forward, you want to arch your back, lift your heart, roll back your shoulders, lift up your chin. You want to be here instead of here, right? We don't want to, um, we don't want to change the direction of our hips. We want to be nicely stacked. Okay. So your cow is lifting through the spine, opening up the heart, rolling back the shoulders, Lifting up the chin. This is full spinal extension. Now let's do the opposite of this. Tuck in the chin. Roll in the shoulders. Roll in your back. And what you want to kind of feel here is a little bit of movement in the lumbar. So think of your lumbar pulling up, your rib cage tucking in, and your belly button is trying to kiss your spine. So it's not that you're slouching, you're rolling inward, tucking inward. So we take a deep breath in to lift the heart, looking up. You take a full deep breath out to roll in the shoulders, drop the chin and curve the back. Let's do four more. Inhale, up. Oh, lovely. Exhale, lower. Give your lungs some gratitude as you inhale and lift up, opening up the ribs, opening up the heart. And exhale fully, nice deep breath out. How about we do one more? Grace and gratitude for your lungs, for your strong body, for your open and loving heart. And exhale fully. Round your back. And 
inhale and lift. Make sure that your spine is nice and straight, nice and flat. Yeah? Okay. So, we have our feet firmly on the ground um, where we can reach. Now, we're going to be working our dorsal flexion and extension in our toes. So, you're going to lift your toes up, lower, and lift your heels up. Lower. Lift your toes up, lower, heels up. Let's keep going through this. You can be wearing shoes, you can be wearing socks, you can be wearing slippers, you can um, be barefoot, right? We like to do yoga barefoot just because it gives us a little bit more spatial awareness in our feet and in our balance and in our body. It makes yoga a little bit more challenging, right? Because our shoes give our ankle a lot of support and our plantar a lot of support. So it's a nice way to experiment with your body when you do stuff like this without your shoes. But if you feel more comfortable with your shoes on or if you're in an office and you can't be that weirdo doing not only chair yoga but also taking off your shoes, it's, uh, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to uh, have everyone tease you. Although that doesn't matter, right? It's your personal health. It's your body. Now, my toes are coming up pretty high, right? But if you feel like you can't even lift the toes, that's okay. The toes don't have to come up. Same with the heels. If you feel like you can't even fully lift them, who cares? That's fine. This is mostly just about working that little flexion and extension in your dorsal. And you're just trying to work through the little toes. Lift up the heel so it's working the Achilles tendon. Little baby toes. Little Achilles tendon. Okay? So up and down, up and down. This is building strength in your feet, as well as your toes, as well as stretching the Achilles, as well as strengthening and stretching your calf muscles. So if you're a runner, or just a human that walks a lot, this is a nice little practice for you to lift up your toes as high as you can. Drop down your toes. Now, from the side, it's not that we're trying to come up on our pinkies and then drop down and open up our toes and lift, uh, drop the heels. So you don't want to be moving the legs. Feet stay flat, just up, down, heels up, down, toes up, down, Heels up and down. All right, looks good. Facing back forward, you are going to bring your feet together so that your big toes are touching. You're going to take your hands to your legs. And you're going to open up through the knees. This is a hip opener. This is Baddha Konasana. This is great. This is all you need to do. If you want to go further, you bring the soles of your feet together. You open up your hips. You're going to use your thumbs as a nice little way to massage your inner thighs. Good. Now, if you think you can go further or if you just want to try it, you're going to take your feet to a stool or a coffee table or another chair, a sofa, maybe, if you want to. And this is a little bit more intermediate. You can take your feet on top and you open up your knees. This should feel nice to you. When you're here, though, you still want to sit up nice and tall. So whether your feet are on the ground or your feet are on a stool, you want to try not to lean forward, not yet at least. You're trying not to round your back. Sometimes just opening up the hips with the femur and the hip flexor in this direction feels a little bit safer, a little bit better. You also want your hands to be light so that you're not gripping your knees to hold your balance. You can uh, lean back on the chair a little bit if you need a little more support for your spine. But to start, just nice and tall, right? Hands are relaxed. Shoulders are relaxed. Upper body, totally relaxed, right? This is like Baddha Konasana. This is a, a nice gentle hip opener. Shoulders down. Now, we want to lean forward. So if your feet are on the stool, Keep them there. If your feet are on the ground, you want to follow with you guys first. Hands on your thighs, lean forward. You're going to try not to round your back, okay? Shoulders stay back. Chest comes forward. Body comes forward. 
Now your hands, keep your shoulders back, but your hands, see if you can creep them towards your knees. All right? So instead of rounding the back, trying to touch the knees, you don't want to do this. Shoulders back, chest up. Right here. This looks good. This is it. Now if your feet are on that coffee table or a stool or whatever, I don't even know what this is. It's thin. I like it. It's not that tight. Um, you take your hands to your shins or your knees or whatever, and you lean forward. Forward as much as you want. Now, don't get scared <laughs> if you might hear like a little pop, a little, a little release <laughs> in your hip flexor. Us yogis, we, we actually like those little sounds. We like hearing our body open up. It's like our, our spirit is speaking to us. Well, thank you. Thank you for opening me. Thank you for stretching me. Now, even from this side here, you see that my chest is forward and my back is straight. I'm trying really hard not to do this. I'm trying really hard to lift that and reach forward. Forward as far as you can. You're going to notice the more you reach forward, so you may want to do this um, in front of a mirror or have your phone camera up with the lens facing you so you can maybe see your back or do it with a friend and help, help out your friends. Share the yoga, right? This is all free. It's just all for help. Keep the chest up, spine up. So it's actually activating your glutes as well as your hips and your groin. And come back up, face forward again. I'll do a couple more chair yoga classes where we can use props like straps and get like really flexible. Sometimes we think chair yoga is like, oh, well, this is just, um, I, I need my yoga mat to get even more stretchy, but it gets, it can get intense in a chair yoga class if you want it to. The next thing is right leg forward. Left knee stays bent, both hands on your right leg, all right? You're going to lean forward just slightly, keeping the shoulders back and down. Grab your legs, see if you can lift your legs up. And lower down. And again, lift up. And lower down. Good. Lift up and hold. Shoulders stay relaxed. Hold the leg. Chest stays up. This is option one. This is option two. This is option three. All right? So you can go all sorts of different ways. What this looks like is you lean forward and grab the leg, the back stays straight, and you lift up. Holding the leg, spine nice and tall, strong here. Or up. Or up even higher. Now I'm not leaning back to get my leg up. What is this trying to accomplish? I don't know, nothing, <laughs> right? Nothing. So you still want to sit up nice and tall. This is working your quadriceps. This is working your hips. This is working your hamstring. Even if it's down here. But you want to try not to lean back. So the objective is really not how high you can get the leg. It's just that you're engaging the right leg. All right, let's try the other side. Lean forward slightly, grab the leg, extend the leg. Good, lift up, lift up higher, keep your chest back. If you need to, you can take your hands to your heart. Maybe you say hi to those little toes, hi toes. <laughs> Good, nice strong body here, keeping the chest up and shoulders back. Good, you all look good. Awesome. Lower down. This next one is intermediate or just a little bit deeper for the hips. Either cross your right ankle over your left ankle. This is great and stay here. If you can, cross your right knee over your left knee. This is great. Stay here. If you want to, crisscross your legs even further. Right? So your right foot is coming behind your left calf. This is a really deep hip adduction. We're pulling into the midline of our body. Take your hands to your heart and reach your arms forward. 
Take your right elbow over your left elbow and give yourself a hug. With this uh, social distancing and isolation, I don't know how often you are hugged. I hope it is every single day, even if that means just hugging yourself and loving yourself and giving yourself gratitude. You can stay here or just cross one more time. So this is your front fastener. This is how it looks seated. In yoga, sometimes when we're standing, your Gravasana is the same posture as a balanced posture with deep hip abduction. If you balance on one foot, chest stays up, knee stays slightly bent. You're not leaning forward, you're not dropping down. Okay. We're still staying nice and high. So again, just ankles crossed and a little hug is great. All right, let go of that, release. On your neck, shake it out, make sure your shoulders are nice and loose. Left ankle over right, and stay here. Or left knee over right, and stay here. Or you're gonna squeeze really tight. You're squeezing with your calf muscles and your inner thighs to pull that foot behind your right ankle. Arms come forward, connect the heart. Cross, give yourself a hug. Thank you, thank you body. Thank you body for staying healthy. Thank you body for staying present. Thank you, body, for being a nice little home for my spirit to move around and feel free in. If you want to go one more time, you're going to crisscross one more time. So we call this eagle. You get it seated, it looks like that, in, um, <laughs> in a balanced posture. Chest is lifted, knees are slightly bent. So both are fine. Good. All right, release. Shake it out nice and low. Again, everyone, yogis, I am going to um, do more chair yoga classes. So there's so much, so, so, so much we can do here. So we're going to come into the final little things, and it's when we stand up. So stand up, roll back your shoulders, going back, going forward. Now, if you don't feel comfortable just in your balance, standing up and standing still, of course, always feel free to grab the back of your chair. Or if you have maybe um, a walker with you or a table, always feel free to grab something. You don't want to injure yourself in yoga, right? Yoga is supposed to feel good. I'm going to take my chair to the side. I'm going to stand behind it. I'm going to give myself some more room here. standing behind my chair, right? So this is acting as a place for me to balance. Right foot stays, left foot is going to come back. Toes can be, or heel can be up, or heel can be down, all right? Whatever you feel more comfortable with. Shoulders stay back, bend your right knee. Straighten your right knee, bend your right knee, straighten. What you're trying to do here is keep your back nice and straight so you're not leaning forward, right? When you have a yoga mat in front of you, this is a crescent lunge. Now, if you want to get deeper on your chair, you're welcome to find a really low, deep, full lunge as your arms come up and above your head, rolling your shoulders back behind your ears. So this is a little bit more of a balancing posture, especially with all 10 toes on the mat and your back heel up. If you need to drop your back heel to help give you a little bit more stability, that's fine. You want to make sure either way that your left hip is pulling forward. And that's kind of the hard part in Virabhadrasana A. This is your warrior one or your crescent lunge. If you don't want your arms up above your head, place them on the chair. Okay, so you can get as deep or as shallow as you want. Crescent lunge, warrior one. Yes? Turn on the other side. So you have to flip your chair around. As your left foot stays, your right foot comes back. Bend your right knee. Come up. Bend and up. Okay? So you can stay really shallow, really gentle. This is really nice. This is sometimes doing yoga as just a way to restore the body feels a lot better than like 
the deep exercise. Either way, when we say exercise is yoga, it's that we're just trying to find movement in the body, unique ways to move the body, once again, to wiggle free the spirit and all the space in the self. So you're welcome to take your arms above your head. A lot of times I see yogis do this. It's not too bad, but you do want to try to keep shoulders back and then down. Good, nice deep lunge here. Crescent lunge. So arms are either up or uh, behind the chair. Good, come up to stand. Two ways to do this last thing we're going to do, balance. You're either going to face your chair back or you're going to face the side. This might be a little bit easier. This is a little more intermediate. We're practicing our tree. The way we're going to do this is start by facing your chair. I angle myself so maybe you can see me a little bit better with my legs. Right hip turns out, right heel comes up, then you want to face your chair again. Creep up that right foot, even if it's just touching your ankle and even if you're holding onto the chair. You can try to hold the chair as tightly as you can, but if you can lift your fingertips, it might be a little bit nicer, a little bit more ease. You want to stand up nice and tall, bring this leg to a comfortable place, either at the ankle nice and low, or creep it up the leg. So if you feel not completely steady in your balance, you're going to hold on to the base of the chair, or you're going to hold on to the handles of your walker, or you're going to hold on to the table that you're at, whatever, okay? You want to face toward it. If you want to get a little more intermediate, you face the side of your chair. That way you only have one hand balance. You want to just try to tap, tap, tap. So maybe a whole hand, maybe one finger. Eventually, you practice this every day, you might be able to take your hands to your heart. And even if you're like wobbling, you're going to fall out of it, that's fine. Part of balance is falling, getting comfortable with falling and knowing how to fall. Keep your foot up, one hand at the heart, maybe one hand at the chair. You tap, you tap, and you feel like you're going to fall. Make sure you breathe. Squeeze in your core. If you think you're going to fall, take a deep breath. Just kind of dismount from it. So that's your Prakashana, either facing the chair or facing the side, whichever feels better. Stay on the other side. Experiment. Now, what's going to be kind of fun in this experiment as you do more and more yoga is that you find one side of your body is much more flexible than the other side. Flexible, stronger, stable, always changes. You want to turn up your left hip, turn up your left heel, bring forward your left hip, bring up your left leg, even if it's just touching the ankle. You're going to hold here. The same thing goes. Maybe touch the chair, maybe take it away. And maybe you feel your foot going crazy, right? Is it moving around a lot? And you're like, oh my gosh, what's happening in my ankles? <laughs> That's why we did that nice little warm up in the beginning of lifting the toes and then lifting the heel, toes and heel, because we're kind of prepping for some more work we do with the ankles. So if this is good, this is great. If you want to face away, this is nice too. Now, we don't want like this kung fu grip on the chair. You're going to be fine. You have, you have the chair, you have a table, you have space. See if, if you can just lighten up your touch, even if it means dropping your toes all the way down to the ground. This is still working your balance. Even with the toes down, you may find that you kind of wiggle in and out of it or, or fall or move around. So toes down is fine. And if you want to creep it up the leg, you can creep it up. If you want to let go, you can let go. You want your body to wiggle, right? So don't feel like you have to be like very stoic and still. Wiggling is actually pretty nice. It's um, working your stabilizing muscles. This is why yogis tend to have, you know, balance by whatever means. Some days better than others. And rock climbers do or people that use their finite muscle groups as opposed to their 
really big superficial muscle groups it's because they practice wiggling around right and then day by day it gets better and better all right let go let's come back down to sitting on the chair i want to sign off with you i'm going to do a couple more of these videos um, either throughout the day or throughout the week i think it's important to do yoga everywhere and for everybody right this is an inclusive experience. Like we're working on this together. We're all here together. You're gonna take your hands to your heart. You're gonna take a deep breath in, lift your shoulders up, squeeze, breathe in. Breathe out. Now if you can, if you feel comfortable, close your eyes. I know that this is a live stream and you're on a screen. That was kind of um, counterintuitive. But see if you can close your eyes. Turn up the corners of your lips so you have a slight smile on your face. I want you to breathe in loving kindness, grace, and gratitude. And breathe out loving kindness. Namaste, yogis. <laughs> Thank you for trying this out with me. It'll be posted and shared on multiple platforms, being um, Facebook, and a clip of this will be on Instagram for some of my Insta followers, and will also be on my website. Thank you, I guys. Um, I hope you guys got a little bit of chair yoga in, and we'll do more of this, all right? either today or throughout the week, so again, that last day.